Hello everyone, this is Sawyer Studios and welcome to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top five Clone Wars arcs ever made and out of those top five Clone Wars arcs, what Lego sets I would like from each one. If I had to pick one Lego set that Lego would make about each of the arcs, I'm going to state that right now. <laughs> So first, let's get into, you know, what are my top five arcs, starting with number five on the list, which is the Ahsoka arc at the end of season five. This arc, I just watched recently, again, and it just has such an emotional value to it. It meant a lot to me when I first watched it, because when I first watched it as a kid, I was like, oh my gosh, Ahsoka's leaving the Jedi Order. Oh, well, first of all, let me just say, Dave Filoni's ingenious callback to the fugitive star in Harrison Ford with the uh, the pipeline scene and Ahsoka jumping out, having that meaningful conversation with Anakin. I think that you know that was really cool because the fugitive is one of my favorite movies with Harrison Ford in it, and it it continued with the storyline just like that because in that movie, spoilers, you know, if you haven't seen the fugitive yet, I would skip past this part, but very quickly, in the movie, Harrison Ford, he's contacting his friend, and he's trying to help him. He's trying to help Harrison get, um, prove that he's innocent. He's trying to help Harrison prove his innocence, uh, because Harrison is in the same predicament as Ahsoka. But he actually ends up being the one setting him up and the one behind, uh, sort of the setup of, of Harrison Ford being arrested and accused and all that, which is exactly what happens with Varys, Opie, and Ahsoka. So I love the parallels that they did. That was just really cool. But the huge emotionality that came from that arc was really the end where I was like, oh my gosh, Ahsoka's like not going to be in the Clone Wars anymore. She's just leaving. How foolish of me. How naive. Of course. I mean, and then Dave Filoni, you know, had plans for her in the future. She wasn't going to leave. I thought that she was gone forever, and I was just, like, heartbroken. Like, that was like, oh my gosh. Uh, but then Rebels came out, and then we got to see Ahsoka again, and that was, uh, that was really great. The Ahsoka arc, they've already made a Lego set that's based off of that arc specifically, which was the Police Gunship. Actually, I just ordered that set off of eBay, new sealed in the box. I should be coming very soon. I'm very excited. So, because they've already made a police gunship, I don't think they need to do a remake of that set. That's one of those sets I feel like doesn't need a remake. I wish that they made it a little bit better when they originally made it, but I don't think it needs a remake. I think that the one Lego set I'd ask for that uh, from that arc would be sort of like a like a little chorus on prison play set. You know, you have like that office with Commander Fox standing in it, the, the doors the ray shield, the doors, and then you have a little prison cell with Ahsoka and like some hallway um, hallway designs that Lego can do. I think, you know, Ahsoka should be in it, Commander Fox, um, a phase two version of him. I think Hound should be in it just because he's such a cool minifigure. I don't think Lego would make a Hound, but like, he's great. If you don't know who Hound is, I mean, this I'm showing you a picture of him right now. Uh, and then two shock troopers, just two regular shock troopers, like the ones that we got in the police gunship set. I think that'd be great. Um, maybe Anakin, uh, if they wanted to not add two shock troopers, they could easily replace those minifigures with like an Anakin and Captain Rex when they're chasing Ahsoka. But sort of like a little mini prison layout play area, I think that'd just be a cool little, uh, cool little set to have from that. All right, next, my fourth favorite Clone Wars arc is Clone Conspiracy, the Fives arc, the one in the Lost Missions. Uh, that consisted of the episodes of The Unknown, Conspiracy, Fugitive, and Orders. That uh, Fives' death is top three, the saddest deaths ever. And just because he was so close to uncovering Order 66 and this huge conspiracy, but he failed. And it just, whenever, whenever a character in the Clone Wars is so close to like unveiling Palpatine's plan, I... I know it's not going to happen because episode 3, you know, Revenge of the Sith, that's a movie. I know it's not going to happen, but like, you know, Dave Filoni is so good at making you like, oh, maybe, but maybe, but maybe, but maybe, and then it doesn't, and you just, and, and the fact that he dies is like so heartbreaking, and 
ah, oh, it hurts me every time I watch it. That's number four, uh, Clone Wars arc. And if I were to choose a set, I, I kind of went all out in this one. This is like totally not even realistic, not even close, not even remotely realistic. But if I had to, if I had to choose a set that I would prefer, I'd like the Republic Medical Shuttle. Like just a Republic, you know, the um, the huge Republic attack shuttle that was sort of modded out to be a medical one at the very beginning. Uh, well, during the episode of The Unknown, when they're trying to transport Tup, and it gets hijacked by Separatists. That would be an amazing set, because the Republic Attack Shuttle, that was a great set. If we, if LEGO remade a shuttle that was bigger, and had more detail inside, especially with that medical bay, like, hatch fin, they could do so much with that. That would be such a cool set. It's sort of like a, um, a Republic version of the Imperial Dropship. It would be so cool. And the minifigures, I just went all out because I knew this set was unrealistic to begin with, so I just went out all out with the minifigures. I would have like a space Anakin, you know, Anakin with like his, uh, you know, like his um, oxygen helmet on, uh, Captain Rex with some special space tubes and stuff, fives in his arc trooper armor, which was never, go we've never got a fives. That could be awesome set to get a fives in. We obviously have to have top. I'd like an officer, like a Republic officer, in the in the ship with Tup, um, a pilot, two would be nice, I'm trying to go a little bit more realistic, probably just one pilot, and then some flying super battle droids, you know, why not, just add in, add in some more molds that LEGO can make, and then uh, buzz droids. I, I think that would be a very solid set, once again, don't think LEGO will ever make it. I can dream. Number three on my Clone Wars arcs, uh, and you might, this might be a surprise to you all. This might come as a as a shocker, but my third favorite Clone Wars arc ever is actually the Crystal Crisis arc on Utapau. The one that was never fully renditioned. The one that we got uh, along with the Bad Batch arc that was also not fully renditioned. They're out on YouTube. I mean, you can go watch them on YouTube. And I'd highly suggest you watch Crystal Crisis on Utapau. That is an amazing arc, and I know you're gonna be like, hey, it's not fully renditioned. How can this be your favorite arc? I don't need awesome animation and cinematography to recognize when there's a good Clone Wars story. Like, Anakin and Obi-Wan, I don't know if you remember this, but like back in season one, their relationship together, it was so great. They're bantering across to one another, their sarcastic comments. It's just, I that was like one of my favorite parts of. Clone Wars Season 1 was just Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship just being shown throughout those episodes. We kind of just lost that. I don't know what, I don't know what happened, but like we never got any more Anakin and Obi-Wan bantering. Like we, we didn't get that awesome humor anymore past like halfway through Season 2. But then we get to Season, uh, I guess this isn't part of a season, but like then we get to this arc and it's just all back full force. Like their sass is so amazing. I watched that I watched that arc mainly just to laugh at Anakin's and Obi-Wan's comments. One of the ones that like make me laugh the hardest is where Obi-Wan sends Anakin to go get this beast so that they can start pulling the crystal across Yuta Power. And Anakin comes back with like a very like scrawny looking looking horse like animal and Obi-Wan's like Obi-Wan's like what happened to the like? What happened to the other beasts out there? And Anakin's like, this is the only one that liked me. And Obi Wan's like, he's like Anakin. Uh, he's just like, why you couldn't get a better animal? And Anakin's like, next time, why don't you get the animal? And Obi Wan's like, next time I'll bring Master Windu. And Anakin's like, oh yeah, because he's lots of fun. I don't know, it's just great. But there's a couple like really emotional parts in Utapau. There's this one part where Anakin, uh, he's like, I'll contact Ahsoka and see if she can. And then it kind of like just settles in and he's like, oh, Ahsoka's not here, like she left. And then Anakin and Obi-Wan have a very real talk. I'm not going to spoil the dialogue because you should just watch the episode, but there's a line in there that really gets you. I'd have a set and I'd call it Defending the Crystal. And I think this would be a set with Obi-Wan and Anakin with the crystal. And I think this would be an amazing set because Lego would just have to come out with a huge, like freaking crystal. Or they could make a brick build one. They could, okay, Lego could make a, lots of green brick builds. Actually, I would prefer a brick build crystal than, a, than just a huge transparent crystal that they make, like a mold. I think a brick build one would be better. But you'd have Anakin and Obi-Wan. I think you could just add in two Magna Guards on uh, Staps. 
Um, I think that would be that's a really cool set. <sighs> All right, number two on my list is, as I said, Siege of Mandalore. This arc just be such a good closer to the Clone Wars, and it shows Captain Rex and Ahsoka like we've never seen them before. And the battle scenes are really awesome. The the animation is great. There are some really dark moments, like Darth Maul's hallway scene, sort of like mirroring the Darth Vader hallway scene in Rogue One. Anyway, I can go into that arc for di like the Order 66 scene. Oh my gosh, um, I need to stop or else I'm gonna get too far into it. Anyway, like I said, I would want them to remake the dropship, but I would want them to add in an ATTE walker with the dropship instead of an ATOT walker. I know that probably would end up being three hundred dollars, like a three hundred dollars set, but I don't care. I want them to make a fiber first dropship in ATT Walker. I think that would be absolutely amazing. It just they need to remake the dropship. They don't need okay. Lego doesn't need to do anything, but like it, it would be an amazing thing to do. Many figures I would have in it would be Captain Vaughn, of course. Uh, I'd have two fiber first troopers and then two fiber first pilots. One for the dropship, one for the ATT Walker. Solid set. If I try really hard, I can see Lego making this in the future. That's the set that I would choose from Siege of Mandalore. We've already gotten a Mandalore version of Ahsoka Tano, so like, we don't need her in that set. And you know, it doesn't have to be two Fiber First Troopers, it could be a Fiber First Trooper and a Fifth or a Second Trooper. Uh, I think that would be cool, we could get more of those, because, I mean, I'd rather, I would love to get more of those troopers. Then my very favorite Clone Wars arc is the Shadow Collective. This consists of the episodes Revival, Eminence, Shades of Reason, and The Lawless. Let me explain the Shadow Collective. This arc is packed full of so much of my favorite things ever. It just, it just is packed. It's jam-packed full of so much of my favorite things. Here's one, Hondo Inaka, like my top five favorite character. He's in my top five list of favorite Clone Wars characters, Hondo Inaka. He's in my top five list of favorite Star Wars characters, let's just be real here. He has some amazing lines. Just like seeing him in action, especially with Obi-Wan again. That first episode uh, gave me chills when I first saw it. And it just uh, made me laugh, it made me smile so much just to, just to see Hondo again. And I think the way that he is portrayed in that episode is absolutely 100% beautiful, like flawless. It was amazing. And uh, I mean, Okay, this arc has a lot of amazing lightsaber battles. Let's just say the first episode, we've got Adi Galia and Obi-Wan Kenobi fight Savage Press and Darth Maul. She unfortunately dies. But then you have Obi-Wan Kenobi with two lightsabers fighting Darth Maul and Savage Press. That's an underrated lightsaber fight right there. I, it's just, ah, uh, like Obi-Wan is such a, he's so BA in that scene. It's amazing. And don't forget, let's not forget, we also have in the same arc, pre Vizsla versus Darth Maul, that's an epic fight scene. And then we have Darth Sidious versus Darth Maul and Savage Opress. I remember when season 5 trailer came out. It already looked amazing. Everything about season 5 looked phenomenal. And I just remember like, like oh my gosh, this looks like an amazing season. And then the screen, and then the trailer goes dark. And then it just, and then it just like, appears, you know, like Darth Sidious is walking towards like the two Mandalorians and the back and you just hear like his evil laughter. There's like, there could only be two. Um, and you are no longer my apprentice. And then he has his two lightsabers and he's fighting Darth Maul Savage Press. And I remember at the, at the, at the Star Wars, uh, at the Clone Wars, um, the, uh, con um, celebration or whatever, they, everyone was going insane. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, what? <laughs> that was amazing. Um, a bunch of really awesome uh, lightsaber battles. Three, four, it, sort of. A great storyline. And also you get to see Satine, Duchess Satine again, and you get to see, unfortunately, her fall, and then her death, and Obi-Wan there. And that's one, of the mo that's one of the most emotional things I've ever, I've ever witnessed. I mean, that's just, that was just heartbreaking. You can see Obi-Wan die a little inside when Duchess Satine just dies in his arms and and like he's still on the light side some of my favorite dialogue is in that arc where he's like it takes strength to resist the dark side only the weak embrace it and but he like you know he tries to level with dark maul he's like you know i understand you know obi-wan still at this point is trying to be that voice of reason that voice of kindness and mercy and compassion even when dark maul is choking the person he loves 
I, I, I just have so much more respect for Obi-Wan after watching that arc. It's just, oh, it's so good. Anyway, I'm getting really off topic and into why this arc. Anyway, Lego. Um, I want them to make a Comerc class fighter slash transport, which is the Mandalorian fighter slash transport. We've gotten a Mandalorian fighter. That's Previsla's fighter. We haven't gotten the transport. The transport's bigger. So the fighter, it's just, it's just the fighter. Uh, the transport are the ones that we see throughout the arc where the bottom opens up, the seats come down, and Mandalorians come out. I want that. I don't want a fighter. I don't want a Mandalorian fighter. I want a Mandal- I want a Comerc class fighter slash transport. That is what I want. I want a feature Lego where the bottom opens up and the seats come down and you can just fit a crap ton of Mandalorians there. That would be amazing. That's what I want. Mini figures. I want Obi Wan Kenobi in Mandalorian armor. I want Bo Katan, and then at least two Mandalorians. Like if you could give us three or four or five, that would be great. But I, I feel like you'd probably only give us two. Actually, I could see you only giving us one, which would be absolutely bogus. But yeah, that would be an awesome, awesome, awesome set to make from there. And I, I mean, I don't, you know, all these sets that I'm listing right here. Like I just, I know they're never gonna happen, but like, who knows? If this video goes viral, maybe, maybe Lego will see, and uh, maybe they will, maybe they will think about it. Just I'm just here planting the seeds of thought. But yeah, those are my five, top five favorite Clone Wars arcs: five Ahsoka arc, Clone Conspiracy, Crystal Crisis, Siege of Mandalore, then the Shadow Collective. There it is, and those are the Lego sets I would have made for each one of those arcs. Thank you everyone for watching my video. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. If you don't have that bell on, then get that bell on so you don't miss one of my videos. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Also, if you're not subscribed, then subscribe. I don't know, I think I'm a pretty entertaining person. Obviously that's biased, but like, I think I'm entertaining. So, subscribe and get that bell on, folks. Let me know down below what your top five Clone Wars arcs are because I'm really curious. Because I was talking to my friend Luke and I mean, his list is, com you know, not completely different, but it has a, we have some similarities, but it's, you know, different enough. And the reasons are very interesting. Uh, so I'm actually really curious, you know, what arcs have stuck out to you? What arcs have sentimental value, has personal meaning to you? Yeah, I mean, what arcs mean something to you in the Clone Wars? And let me know in the comment section. Alright everyone, this is Sora Studios, and I'll see you all in the next video.